It's time for cream bronzer and illuminators. Welcome back everybody. My name is Sammy George. If you have been following, this is the last part, the last part in our step-by-step -step series of what is Saint Beauty and how do I apply it? So we have done all of the things previous to this. I will link them in the videos below, but today we're going to talk about the warm, glowing, luminous features that you can get with cream bronzer and cream and powder illuminator. So if you are interested in seeing this final step to our three-dimensional face, stick around as always. Thank you so much for being here. Okay, let's jump in. I should probably get my hair out of the way so that you guys can see our bronzer and illuminator application. So what is bronzer? What is illuminator? Those are the final steps, the extras, if you will, that you can add to your 3D Saint foundation to really get warm, glowing, radiant skin. And it couldn't be more simple. As a part of your color match, your artist will make recommendations on those. But honestly, those are the fun parts. I can wear any of our bronzers, any of our illuminators, and I like to mix and match all the time. Like for example, for today in my palette, I actually have a bronzer and illuminator right next to each other, and I'm gonna mix those together in my bronzer application because this is called glow, it adds extra glow, and I love even more glow than my bronzer would traditionally give me. Here is my illuminator that I'm gonna use to help define and highlight that cheekbone. You can add it to the center of the face to increase that brightness and luminosity. But you guys, there are so many different options that you could choose from. So these are the remaining cream illuminators. This is where the two that I'm using today go in my palette. These are four of our five bronzers, and then we have these powder illuminators. So talking quickly about illuminators, since they look really similar, okay, cream versus powder. In my opinion, cream is a little more forgiving on mature skin because just like creams on the face, your cream illuminator is going to move with your fine lines and wrinkles and it's not as pow. Now, here's the magic of powder. If you like more of a glam, more luminous like cheekbone, or you wanna have that option for a wedding, totally got it. And our powder illuminators make the most beautiful eyeshadows. So cream, powder, we have similar colors in both. They do the same thing. They're just a different formulation. And then we have our bronzer. So in our typical 3D foundation routine, we have already color corrected. I have added my foundation shade. I have added my contour and my concealer, which is known as my brightener around my eyes and down the center of the face. What I would typically do next, if I was just going to finish off the 3D look is I would add my lip and cheek. But when I bronze, I like to bronze before I add my lip and cheek. So I am lip and cheek. Well, I have it on the list, but I am cheek free right now. And we will add that here in a minute. So here's all we're going to do. I'm going to show you the other shades that I have in my palette before we're done. At the end of this video, I will swatch all of the bronzers and illuminators so that you can see. But for the purposes of where do I apply it? If that's what you're here for, let's do that. So this is Bella Bronzer. This is our most universal shade and it is my favorite. And I'm actually going to mix it with Glow Illuminator. Now Glow for me would be too dark if I wore it as a traditional illuminator, like on the top of the cheekbone, down the center of the face. But I'm gonna take the fluffy end of my blush and bronzer brush and I'm going to swirl them together. I'm gonna get a decent amount of product just on the top of those bristles. And here's what I want you to know. Bronzer and illuminator are the creamiest products in your palette. So when you first open them up and you swirl your brush, if you have a ton on there, no big deal. Just tap it off on the back of your hand. As they are in your palette and they are exposed to air, they'll start to dry down a little bit. So they will be even easier to work with, but just know they might be super creamy when you open them. So always start with less is more. So where do we traditionally apply a bronzer? I'm gonna tell you the two places to keep it super simple. The high points of the face in this C motion right here. The high points of the face are where the sun would naturally hit. Bronzer is a sheer product that adds warmth and glow to the skin the same way a suntan would. The difference between contour and bronzer, because I get that question all the time, because if you look in my palette, here is my contour and here is my bronzer. It's actually on my end reflecting pretty good to show you contour is ashier and it's meant to frame the face. It actually gives coverage. 
bronzer is typically more warm and it doesn't give coverage. It's a sheer flush of color. So all I'm doing is the lightest touch onto the forehead to add that warmth. And now I'm gonna go to the top of that cheekbone area. And warmth in the skin is amazing if you have discoloration. So if you have melasma, acne, um, rosacea, anything along those lines, as long as you've color corrected first, the beauty of bronzer is it actually adds continuity and toning to the skin and makes everything flow even better. It makes your discoloration less noticeable and I'm all for that, okay? So I am going just in the C top here. Now I skip my temple because my face is starting to hollow and while it doesn't give coverage, it still does have a bit of a darkness to it. So I just leave that area empty and I go to the top of the cheekbone. If you don't or you're unsure, just go for it. It's it's very sheer. I'm, maybe I'm being a little picky. All right, so that's it. Top of the forehead, top of the cheekbone. You can go across the nose if you like and the chin. If you think about where do I get sunburnt, it's typically here, wherever your head sticks out the farthest, the tip of your nose and your chin. So we are just emulating a tan. And then there's one other place that I love to put mine and it's down the neck to make sure that my face and my neck and my chest, wore the wrong shirt today, can't see my chest, <laughs> but so that they all match really well. So the thing about our neck is, our face, chin, sticks over our neck. So it typically gets not as much sun. So it's almost always lighter on most people. If you notice that your face is darker than your neck, pull some bronzer down your neck and now everything will match really seamlessly. It flows into this contour line that we have right here. And that's it. That's bronzer, a sheer pop of warmth to the skin. And any age, any skin type can wear bronzer. And I'm going to tell you a little truth. If you are nervous about wearing bronzer and you are um, of the more mature skin, understand bronzer and warmth are going to be the best thing that you could do for our skin as we age we start to lose those warm tones. It's why things tend to look a little bit more gray, a little bit more white. And by adding in that warmth, it just adds a youthful glow without feeling like you're Kim Kardashian. So you can keep it as light as you want. And cream bronzer is so forgiving and it moves with your skin, just like your cream foundation will. That's why I love it so much more than powder is that it's such a sheer luminosity and just moves with you that I just love it. So my favorite bronzer is Bella, but my go-to is Bella and Glow mixed together. Now let's talk illuminator. Like I said, there are two formulations, powder and cream. Cream is more forgiving. So because I have a ton of fine lines and wrinkles in this area, that's my preference. If I'm doing something fancy, I might add a little bit of powder. Here's my favorite way to apply illuminator. Illuminator in other makeup brands is called highlighter. So if you're thinking like, what's an illuminator? And you're used to the term highlighter, same deal. Where we put it is on this top part of our cheekbone as like the number one most common place. The other places that it looks awesome are down the nose, on the top of the cupid's bow, and underneath this part of the eye. Anywhere that you want to like pop things open, draw attention, kind of give something just the smallest finishing touch without anything over the top. Like it just draws your eye to the center of the face when you bring it like lightly down the nose, pops out your cupid's bow because light is reflective. So people are drawn to those areas of the face. If you've been around here, you know I'm gonna tell you never swipe into any of your creams. It distributes too much product. We tap into the cream with our brush and we tap onto the face except with illuminator. I'm actually gonna have you grab your sponge. This is, to me, okay, I'll show you two ways. To me, this gives you the most control and doesn't leave fingerprints on your face. <laughs> but that doesn't mean that you can't do it the other way. Um, just being a little type A, this is my typical way of doing it. So I'm gonna swipe in to get a generous amount. I'm gonna pinch my perfecter, and now I'm gonna come onto the very top of that cheekbone, and it's gonna add that luminosity right to the top, just a little bit of a reflective glow. Now, if you're like, keep it simple, Sammy. Okay, grab your finger and you can just press it on. See how I feel like we got a little bit more on this side from the jump 
and that's because I think it tends to pick up more on your finger. So let's see if we can even it out a little bit there. And then like everything else, our Perfector sponge is an amazing blending tool. So if you ever feel like you get too much, just blend. And there we go. Let's do a little down the center of the face. So I'm gonna grab that same little tap on the finger and I'm gonna go onto the bridge of the nose and right here on the tip. And now let's pop out the Cupid's bow. You guys see? I can just add a little bit there. And let's go underneath the brow bone. People love to use our illuminators on the eye as eyeshadow, so you could absolutely do that too. But that's it. And actually, we have powder illuminator, cream illuminator, and then cream illuminator that is scented with six different very light scents. So if you do have one of those, and this one is, you can put it on the wrist as a perfume and behind the ears. And I'm missing a prime opportunity because I wore the wrong shirt, but the collarbone with an illuminator on it, it just gives the nicest like little reflection off your collarbone. And if you have one of them that has the perfume, you're just gonna like slightly smell it throughout the day and it's just lovely. Because I was so excited to show you the illuminator, I forgot to put my blush on. <laughs> so typically after I do bronzer is when I put my lip and cheek on and I add my illuminator over the top. Now, there's it doesn't matter. You can do whatever you want. Since they're all the same formulation, they're all cream, order of operations for all of these extras, it doesn't matter. It's completely a matter of preference. So let's grab Black Cherry. And I know it's one of the shades that scares people in the tin, but look how lovely Black Cherry is. That's what we're gonna do on the cheeks today. So I have a base of Baby Watermelon on the lips with Black Cherry over top. And now I'm gonna grab the smallest amount. Remember, if you feel like, did I get too much? Swirl it on the back of the hand. You can apply your product right from there. And now, Let's add a little bit of blush right up that contour line. And it is amazing in the fall. Love me some black cherry. Let's do this side. And remember, your blush, your lip and cheek, they're gonna, it's gonna die down in like the first five minutes. So if you put some on, and like to me right now, it's like, okay, that looks really, really pigmented. Two things you can do. You could just wait for like the five minutes let it die down as you do the rest of your face, or you can diffuse it with your perfecter. You can top it with like a more neutral shade, like a ballerina or an Ibiza or something that will mute out like too strong of a pop of color, or, or you can add a little bit of your highlight around the edges. Like creams don't dry down, remember, that's why creams are magical is that you can continue to play with and adapt your makeup as you go. So if you ever get it too high, if you ever feel like, oh, it's too close to my eye area, just to feather out that area. If you wanna diffuse it, remember I'm just tapping on a little bit of my highlight. And there we go. Perfect. All right, the hair is down, the makeup is done, and I have emptied out our palette that previously had all of our colors, and I snuck in a little bit closer so I can do these swatches for you and you can actually see them. So let's rebuild our palette while we swatch all of our bronzers and all of our illuminators so you can see what you like the most. So I'm gonna start with cream illuminators, and our first one is Pearl. So Pearl is gonna be this white kind of frosted shade and it is really a subtle white has a little bit of an iridescent frost to it and it's beautiful so that is pearl next we have angel which you'll see all of these have a luminosity to them so i could probably stop saying that every time angel is more pink so you have photoshop photoshop you have pearl and you have 
Angel. And I can do this a little heavier, but these are rarely worn heavy. So they're just that little pop of brightness. So we have Angel. Let's move on to one that you can tell I really love. <laughs> this is Honey, and I love to mix Honey with my Bella bronzer when I am gonna start my application with bronzer. So here's Honey, it's yellow based, and I will sometimes start my application with bronzer when I'm toning my skin first um, because I have a lot of discoloration and acne and things like that, so there are some different techniques, but Honey is absolutely beautiful on all skin tones as well. Now this is confetti. Confetti is available at the time of this video. Whether or not it will be down the road, I don't know. It was limited edition. It came back, it went away, it was back on the website. So confetti is also yellow based, but can you see when it says confetti, it's because it has little tiny flecks of gold in it. So this is honey and this is confetti, a little more yellow, a little more gold equally beautiful. Now my first ever and probably most favorite because it's the only ones that have the smell in them is the rose gold. So all of our, and it comes unscented as well. So if you like the perfume option, it will be in rose gold, but I just love rose gold in general. So this is probably my most worn and I've gone through multiples of these. So that is rose gold. Now, this is Nova. Nova is our newest one, and I'm in love with Nova um, in the summer because it had that additional warmth to it, that additional bronzy glow that I could still wear because Glow Illuminator, which I'll show you next, which is beautiful on darker skin tones, is too dark for me in a true illuminator fashion. But let me show you. The other place I love Nova is right in the center of the lip. And you can do this with any of them. Nova just happens to be my favorite for that punch of color, um, for that punch of brightness, I should say, to the center of the lip that really makes your lips look more pouty. So if you're somebody like me that has really small lips and no definition, any added pout is wonderful. Now we have Glow. So this is Glow, like I said, a beautiful on darker complexions in that same area here right here this is glow my absolute favorite to mix with my bronzer to add a little bit of illumination to it but there you go these are all of the creams so starting with our whites heading to our pinks yellows gold rose gold and then into the golden and the more bronze do you guys have a favorite Tell me in the comments, which of these is your favorite? So we have pearl, angel, honey, confetti, uh, rose gold, nova, and glow. Now let's swatch the powder illuminators so you can see how gorgeous they are and you'll see what I mean by like, man, these make the most amazing, like literally amazing eyeshadows. There's a ton of pigment in them and they have just enough of like a shimmer shine to be amazing lid colors. So this is Glamazing and here it is swatched on the arm. So it definitely will give you more shine. So if shine is your ideal situation with an illuminator, then definitely try one of these powders. So this is Glamazing, has that white icy base for sure. Now we have Starlet, which reminds me a lot of Angel. But Starlet, so you'll see it's in that pink family, but it's also a little bit iridescent. Can you see the iridescent? So it looks white on camera to me, but it is like an iridescent pink. So this is definitely gonna be cooler. These guys are gonna be cooler. So there we have Starlet. And I wonder if I can catch this in the light the right way. Okay, you see? Can you guys see how that has that iridescence to it? So head on, it looks white, but it's actually that pinky. It's really pretty. Super gorgeous on the eyes. Now, one of my favorite pinks for the eyes. This is Photoshop. This one is just bam gorgeous. So this is Photoshop. And here's the other thing. 
you get twice as much product as you would in an eyeshadow tin. So our eyeshadow tins are half this size. And I think these are $2 more. Like I, this is probably three years old. I think shelf life of makeup is one year old, one year, but don't judge me. Now, what do we have next? Uh, this is Goldie. I was just doing an eyeshadow, a fall eyeshadow look with Goldie because I mean, is that not just the most beautiful golden powder that you could put on the eyes? And let me show you this one. Actually, maybe I'll show you the next one on the cheeks. It's gonna, it's gonna take this, it's gonna take this up a notch. So this is Georgia again, fall eyes calling my name. So also golden, but has a little bit more bronze to it. So what do you think? Can you guys tell the difference between the cream formulation and the powder, how these are going to have more of the shine and these are going to have a little bit, first of all, these are gonna be a little more blendable, harder to blend a powder on the face. Um, but I mean, just gorgeous. All right. In the comments, which of these is your favorite? So we have, oh man, see, I don't use these as much. Georgia, Goldie, Photoshop, Starlet, and Glamazing. There we go. Tell me which one you love the most. And then, as promised, let's put a little bit of this up here. So your, if you have the blush and bronzer brush, this one, not blush and bronzer, blend brush. This was actually meant for powder illuminator. Do you see how much that picked up? I'm going to tap off all that excess or I'm going to look crazy. So we're just going to tap that on. You see that? Just taking that up to a whole nother level of, of wow. So that is Georgia as the illuminator on the cheeks. Let's finish off our swatches with our bronzers and then that's it. That's all I have for you today. So here we go. Starting with our yellow based, moving into our warmest in the red base. So this is Palm. And Palm is just going to have that golden, caramely undertone to it. So that is Palm. Now, for my fair-skinned ladies, this is Tan Lines. Now, I can wear Tan Lines in the winter, but I typically cannot in the summer because I'm just not fair enough. So do you see, see how this doesn't really show up all that well in areas that I'm tanned? But in these areas where I don't have as much sun, this would just give me a very natural glow. So if you are nervous about bronzer that you think it's going to look too dark on you, tan lines is a great option for fair skin or suede lip liner. If you guys haven't seen suede lip liner, I should pull that out. Hold tight. Okay. Suede lip liner is not a part of our, like on the website, it is not under bronzers. It is just a true like neutral lip liner, but I wear it all the time when I want just a little bit of warmth for a bronzer. You'll see it is a bit ashier and just a tinge darker than tan lines but it's not going to be as dark as Bella. So it's a great in between. Um, it is a drier formulation than our bronzer. So you may have to swirl in a little bit more to pick some up, but it works like a dream. Um, this also makes a great eyeshadow and obviously it's a lip liner. So this is an awesome multi-purpose product. I just lost the sun behind a cloud. So it just got darker in here. So maybe it's time to finish this up. So let me show you Bella bronzer. For the longest time, this was the only bronzer that Saint had. And it is, it's like the ride or die, the OG. Everybody loves it. It's the favorite. And Bella works amazing. It's universally beautiful. You'll see it has that bronzy 
glow to it a little bit more than these guys do, but it's not shimmery and it's just absolutely lovely. All right, two more. Next, we have our newest bronzer, which is High Tide, which has been my go-to this summer as I've gotten even darker than I am in the winter. I usually wear Bella in the winter. I can wear tan lines, like I said, but this is High Tide. So it is a gorgeous, warm, caramely bronzer. So if you ever feel like you're wearing Bella and you feel too ashy or too washed out, you want to try High Tide. High Tide was a fabulous addition. Like, do you ever see a new shade come out and you're like, I didn't realize the line needed that until it got it. And now I'm like, oh yes, this running out of space. <laughs> Let me show you our last and this is Heat Waves. Heat Waves is absolutely gorgeous for darker tones or on the lips to mix with your lighter tones if you wanna take, like if you took tan lines or suede and mixed it with Heat Waves, mm. but this brick undertone is so gorgeous. Like this is a terrible spot for it, but it is so beautiful, especially if you wanted to do a bronzer blush in one lovely. Definitely love this on the lips too. So that's it. That is it. And I will help match you to a bronzer, to an illuminator. But I can tell you this, before I became an artist with Saint, I had every bronzer and definitely half of the illuminators and I wore them all the time. Like they're totally interchangeable, um, like color wise, because it's just a sheer flush of color. Like it didn't overall change the look of my makeup that much. It's not a color match like specific thing, but I can help you if you're nervous. So there we go, guys. This is Palm Tan Lines. This is Suede Lip Liner, Bella High Tides, and Heat Waves. My third and final request, what is your favorite bronzer? That is it. That is the end of our series on what is Saint Beauty and the step-by-step -step application to go from completely bare-faced all the way through to 3D foundation with some extra glow with bronzer and illuminator. Last week we talked about lip and cheek. This has been so much fun. Thank you guys so much for joining me. Be sure to like and subscribe. We're not going anywhere. I'll be back next week with a new topic for you guys. But as always, I truly appreciate you guys being here and I hope you have a wonderful week.